Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and these are 10 romances with amazing disability, chronic illness, and neurodivergence representation in them. This is actually my eighth disability rep video, and I am so thrilled about that. So if you want even more recommendations, I'll leave those other seven videos linked down below. Disability representation is a near and dear place in my heart. Um, I love seeing representation and um, I love also specifically like Own Voices books. They're fantastic, but I just love seeing any representation at all in a book um, because it really helps people feel seen in our community and my community. So um, yeah, I can't wait to share these 10 books with y'all. Some of them are like my all-time favorites that I've talked about a lot. So probably not going to be surprised by a lot of these. The first one is If Only You by Chloe Liza. This is one of my favorite uh, releases from last year. It is the currently the latest book out in the Bergman Brothers series. This one's about Ziggy and Sebastian. Both of them play professional sports, which was so cool. You rarely see sport romances where both main characters are athletes themselves. Um, she's a professional soccer player and he is a professional hockey player. Sebastian in here is actually on Ziggy's brother's hockey team. So that's how they know each other. And Ziggy is kind of known in the media as like kind of like the goody two shoes player. And she just wants to get rid of that title. So she comes up to Sebastian who kind of has like a bad boy title, if you will. And it's like, okay, I kind of like want to roughen up my image. Do you want to be like fake friends? And like the media can see us like out and about places. And like, I won't be known as like goody two shoes. Um, Cause I'm kind of like sick of that. And he reluctantly at first agrees to be fake friends with her. And then they get to know each other more turns into a romance. I think it's wonderful. I love this book a lot. Um, for representation in this one, Ziggy is autistic and you got to read about her in the other books in the series because this series starts out when she's like 16 and now she's a grown woman by the time it gets to her book. Um, and she's newly diagnosed in like I think book one. Um, so I really love seeing like her progression. You see her as a side character like getting through and understanding her diagnosis. And even in book number two, Frankie, who's also autistic, like really takes Ziggy under her wing and like helps her get through this diagnosis because she's also autistic. So I really love the representation in here. It's own voices for autism. And it's also own voices for celiac disease. I have celiac disease. So I really appreciate that representation. I know Chloe also has celiac. And throughout this book, Sebastian is having some stomach issues. Part of the book is about him getting diagnosed with celiac. It's very different to my own experience because I was diagnosed as a child and he's a full grown adult. And so obviously the experiences are gonna be vastly different, um, but I still really appreciate this representation. It was done really well. And I love to talk about like celiac disease and food and gluten-free food and everything like cross-contamination and stuff. So I really appreciate this one and I really recommend it. My favorite book of 2023 was Out on a Limb by Hannah Bonham Young. So of course I have to mention it. It's probably one of my favorite books with disability representation like ever. It's so good. So Wynn and Bo end up meeting at a Halloween party and they have a one night, amazing night together, but Wynn ends up pregnant. And this is the romance between Wynn and Bo. And even though they have this like amazing one night together and like they've already been physical and intimate with one another, it's friends to lovers. Like they don't want to jeopardize the, the relationship they could have with each other for the sake of their kid. And so they don't let each other step over that more than friends boundary after that point. They don't want to ruin the relationship that they could have together um, for the sake of the baby. So they just decide to become friends after Wynn finds out that she's pregnant. But it comes to a point where like they cannot picture their lives without the other person and the dam breaks and they they have to admit their feelings. And it is so sweet and beautiful. I love this book so much. I read it twice last year. It's beautiful. This is honestly, I feel like an ode to the disabled community. When in here was born with a limb difference. You can see her, her little hands there. Um, It's own voices. Hannah Bottom Young was also born with a limb difference like Wins, like her hand. And Bo is an amputee. He lost his leg due to cancer. And so I just love the discussion of disabilities and Wins inner turmoil in her head and like in her thoughts she has about like being a mom. Like, will she be able to do things that are required to have a baby and have a child if she has a disability like is that even feasible for her like would she be giving her child the best life possible if she can't do certain things and like those things go through like every person's brain who has a disability and wants children in their life you know there's so many quotes in this book that mean the absolute world to me <laughs> there's one scene in here that i adore that hannah has literally told me that her husband is done it was like inspired by her husband so i love that Bo ends up like kissing every single one of her like fingers on her less developed hand and so the quote in the book that I absolutely love says, 
Then he kisses each of my little fingers one by one. No one has ever done that. I've never bothered to imagine that anyone would ever touch me there so intimately. I was dead, dead. This book makes me cry every time I read it. I read it twice. <laughs> and it means, it means the world to me. The representation in this book means just absolutely everything. This next one is so fun. It's a college sapphic romance. This is Catch and Cradle by Katya Rose. Becca and Hope are teammates on their college lacrosse team. And there is a large rule. Like if you're on the team, you cannot date each other. <laughs> like, nope, not happening. But these two can't, can't stop thinking about each other. Like they're constantly on each other's minds. Becca right here is the team captain and she has to really tamper down her feelings for Hope and like cannot let Hope know how she feels about her because she does not want to break the rules or like make Hope feel comfortable in any way. I also just love Hope. Hope's an awesome character who loves like shining the spotlight on other people and helping other people shine. Like, oh, I love her. This was a great romance, like watching these two women fall in love. Like, I absolutely love it. The representation in here that I absolutely adored was dyslexia rap. Hope was diagnosed with dyslexia when she was a child. Um, and I love the accommodations and modifications that she implements herself and her friends also help her with, her roommates help her with to get through college, to go through classes. Like she doesn't wanna be a burden to her friends like many other people in her community feel like sometimes as well. Like she never wants to feel like a burden. And so um, sometimes she can't read the small texts on textbooks like at all, like, like it's so hard for her. So her roommates will like create like voice recordings of the textbook for her to listen to. And like in exchange, like she'll like bake them something or like clean the apartment up. That's just like one of the things that I really liked about this because it really delves into discussion about dyslexia. I work with kids who have dyslexia. So dyslexia is like a forefront in my profession. Um, so I just, I loved the discussion in this. Next is Mickey Chambers Shakes It Up by Cherish Reed. Bri and I actually read this for a Chronically Courageous book club last year where we highlight disabled and chronically ill voices. Um, so we read this one. This one's about Mickey and Diego. So Mickey is a college professor, but she ends up getting another job at a bar as a server. And um, Diego happens to be her boss. And so that's a little forbidden because Diego is her boss, but then it gets even more forbidden when Diego like enrolls in a college writing course at college. But uh, then he realizes that Mickey is his teacher on top of that. Uh, I just loved this bar setting. It was so fun. The majority of the book does take place like in the bar and Mickey learning about like bar life and bar culture and like how there's like wonderful like found family in this bar setting. Like it was really cool. Um, Mickey has hyperthyroidism. So there's a discussion about that and that representation is in here. And I love the discussion about chronic illnesses in here. Like I felt so seen with Mickey. Um, I do not have hyperthyroidism, but the way that she talks about like it being invisible and people not taking her seriously and doctors not taking her seriously because they can't see it like, ooh, Related to that too much. Lizzie Blake's Best Mistake by Maisie Eddings is my next one. This was my first book that I read by um, Maisie Eddings and Maisie Eddings has like wonderful representation in her books. I think in her uh, first book in the series, there's anxiety rep. And then the third book, there's like anxiety rep as well. I really, really, really love her representation in books as well. I think it's like slight, but it's also a part of the character itself. You know what I mean? Like it's not like this big looming thing it's just a part of them. It's who they are. So Lizzie in here has ADHD and that is a part of her identity. And she does admit that she struggles with it a lot. Um, like she has, oh, I, I love her so much. She has this purse that had me like thinking, maybe I have ADHD then. I don't know if I, have, I maybe I do because her purse sounds exactly like mine. <laughs> she was basically saying like, my purse is a direct reflection on um my chaotic brain. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> Do I not know something about myself? Um, Cause her tote purse literally has like everything but the kitchen sink in it and she can never find anything in it. And I'm like, oh, that's B. <laughs> so I don't know. I just like really related to Lizzie in that aspect at least. But she does talk about like the serious, more challenging parts of having ADHD. Like it's really hard for her to keep a job. She's always had a really hard time keeping a job because She's unfortunately late a lot because of reasons. Her brain just like can't focus sometimes. She berates herself a lot because of it, but um, there's also like amazing discussion about it and working through that and stuff like that. So anyway, this is about her romance with our hero who is taking a business trip to America. And on one of his nights there, he ends up having a grand old night, okay, with Lizzie, Miss Lizzie. I think because of her chaotic purse, one of the contraceptives she uses that night with him, if you know what I mean. Um, I think it's either expired or has a hole in it or something, but they don't realize it. So she ends up getting pregnant and she calls him up. He's all the way back in Australia. He drops everything and moves to America to be with Lizzie and to help her 
like when she's pregnant to raise this baby they end up moving in together so it's a romance between the two of them i've been really loving surprise pregnancy books so like this one was great i love the discussion of adhd representation in here if you want a short little novella to listen to um and if you have audible it's available to listen to for free um this is the breakup artist by aaron clark and laura lovely so the heroine of this book is a wheelchair user and she um has this job but she doesn't like have her creative like writing outlet at this job i don't think the way she gets it out is by writing these breakup letters that people like ask her to write anonymously so the heroine writes all these letters right and um she's kind of had a crush on the barista at the coffee shop she goes to a lot and then she realizes that one of the letters that she wrote was for his ex-girlfriend and that's how his ex-girlfriend broke up with him and so that's kind of like the secret part in here so you kind of like know what the conflict's going to be at the end um but i really loved this representation because she was just a, a wheelchair user like it wasn't used as a plot device or anything i just love seeing that representation because you rarely get to see something like that in a romance book or in a book in general another novella that i really loved reading that also has a wheelchair user rep is can escape love by Alyssa cole this is fairly short it's such a fun audiobook like it's so fun um i've only read book one in this series i think this is number like 2.5 or something um i've only read book one i tried to read a book two a while ago i just couldn't get into it so i did read this technique kind of like as a standalone and i was perfectly fine like you can read a standalone if you want or you can read the series do whatever you want i'm not the reading police <laughs> this is about regina and gus and they actually met years ago but they have no clue what the other person looks like so gus used to live stream him like doing puzzles and like talk while he did puzzles he like barely had any viewers um but he always had one person pop in like all the time and they chatted all the time online and like became friends and stuff and that's our heroine regina she has always been soothed by his voice and suffers from really bad insomnia and um uses his videos to help her fall asleep recently in the past few months his like channel and videos have been taken down he's not making videos anymore his videos his past live streams are not up anymore and she is struggling so hard to sleep she ends up finding his um like email address and kind of like propositioning him like paying him to uh make voice recordings for her essentially because she's having such a hard time falling asleep like i need help but gus kind of like takes it a step up where he's like okay you don't have to pay me but i need you to help me on a project that i'm working on that she's very passionate about so i'll leave it at that because it is a novella i don't want to spoil anything but this was so great i love the discussion of being a witcher user she also has like different like wheelchairs and different names for them which were so cool and also just talking about accessibility being a wheelchair user is so difficult in this world um so i really appreciated that discussion in here next i have fake it till you bake it by jamie wesley our heroine in here's name is jada and she is hated throughout america <laughs> she was on a reality dating show that's basically like the bachelor and um the bachelor like chooses her at the end right is proposing to her at the end there's no other woman left he chose her and she rejects his proposal and so america absolutely hates her for like breaking this man's heart um when in actuality she just like didn't realize until that moment like i do not want to do this i do not know this man like what's going on so she kind of like runs back home to her grandma's small town um kind of like with her tail between her legs she needs a job um and she ends up getting a job like her grandma ends up hooking her up at a job at this bakery her grandma owns this uh, football team and one of the players on the football team during the off season he owns and runs this bakery that's our hero donovan jada and donovan do not really get off on the right foot i don't want to spoil that moment for y'all but they just they don't get off on the right foot um but they're kind of stuck together because her grandma roped her into this job and he cannot say no to the owner of his team. So like he lets Jada work there. Uh, and then people end up figuring out and seeing that Jada's working at this bakery. Um, the bakery recently has been struggling to make ends meet. Um, he's not really getting a lot of business, but once people start recognizing Jada from like the television, so obviously people, more people start coming and coming. They also get to a point where the two of them fake date in order to get more people into the bakery. And then these two opposites end up attracting one another um and they fall for one another when they're fake dating so this was so fun i obviously loved all the baking stuff and the baking elements and i love this like big broody grumpy football player absolutely loving to bake like give it to me yes the representation in this book is with dyslexia jada has dyslexia and it's mentioned a few times in here and i just really loved that little a little, little sprinkle of representation. Next, I have Silent Lies by Neva Altaj. This is the most recent book in her Perfectly Imperfect series. If you want to read Moth Romance books that always has some type of representation, you have to pick up this series by Neva. Like, they are so good. I love Neva's books and I love that she always makes sure to have representation in them. This is about Sienna and Drago. They are from two 
rivaling mafia families, but they end up getting put in an arranged marriage. Um, it's very simple in that aspect. Like, I don't know what else to say about it. They end up getting put in an arranged marriage. Drago um, has high frequency hearing loss. When he was younger, his family experienced a house fire and he ended up saving, um, he has two younger sisters that were twins. One of them ended up not surviving, one of them did, and he had to rescue, he, like, he tried to rescue both of them. And because of like all the fire and the things like blowing up around the house, it caused um, partial hearing loss. And so he really thrives off of lip reading and Sienna makes sure also to speak in one of his ears that he can hear better out of at one point. Oh, and another element in here too that I forgot to mention is like Sienna also, like the mafia boss of her family, tells her to like you're marrying this man but I also want you to spy on him but Drago knows right from the get-go that he knows she's going through that so <laughs> there's that little element in there as well it's super fun I really enjoyed this one Sienna is like a really fun like bright character and Drago is like her complete like black cat opposite and the last book that I have to mention is Dukes and Deeks by Tori Jean this one has endometriosis own voices representation so our two main characters in here they're like best friends our hero is a professional hockey player but he gets suspended for a few months because he did something on the rank that he should not have. He is not doing well in that department. Um, and so he uh, he escapes kind of like to his hometown where our heroine is, his best friend, and he gets roped into helping her with her Jane Austen festival. During this festival, every week, a new like representation of one of Jane Austen's books will be like live performed throughout the venue. Um, and our heroine in here is struggling because like the two characters, the two actors that were gonna play Lydia and um, Wickham, <laughs> they've run off and actually eloped like in real life together. And so she's like, crap, I don't have anyone to play these two characters. And they're like essential to Pride and Prejudice, so I need them. And so she offers to play Lydia and um, the hero in here puts himself up on a platter to play Wickham. <laughs> he doesn't really know what he's getting himself into. So um, this like role-playing situation, this acting situation is the perfect opportunity for them to maybe realize their unrequited feelings that they have for one another. I really love this one. It's really good. The heroine of the story, it's about her going through the process of being diagnosed with endometriosis. She doesn't know what chronic illness she has, only the fact that she is in a lot of pain and she's dealing with a lot of medical gaslighting and she thinks she's going crazy because all these doctors are telling her like all this pain is normal when she knows it's not, but she doesn't know how to figure out what's going on. Her going in here from medical gaslighting, like for sure. Um, but I really love seeing the progression of being diagnosed with something because it is so hard. And in some of these books with representation, you don't really get to see the real time diagnosis process. Um, so I did really appreciate that in this book. Anyways, there you have it. Another 10 romances with disability representation. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me, what emoji are we gonna do? Let's do like a cake or a cupcake emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.